This is Doug Caldwell, University of Florida, Collier County Extension. I'm a landscape entomologist. An entomologist is somebody that studies the behavior and management of insect pests. Some people call me Dr. Doug Bug. It's September 2012 in South Florida. Today we're looking at a serious threat. This is the sago scale, which is killing our king and queen sagos. Taxonomically, sagos are more closely related to pine trees than palm trees since they are cone-bearing plants. People love these in their landscape because of the nice symmetry and because of the ancient folklore. Some people, archaeologists, believe that these plants, certain species of sagos, were used as a primary food source for dinosaurs. As everybody knows and we preach, the first step in IPM, integrated pest management, or in dealing with a pest problem, is to identify the pest. When the sago scale came over, many people thought, and rightly so, that they had a downy or powdery mildew problem, a disease problem, so they were using fungicides. And it does look like a, a serious case of powdery mildew. So fungicides will not work on an insect. You have to use an insecticide on an insect situation. This morning we're with Debbie Gogan, who's a certified pest control operator for the state of Florida and also oversees landscape maintenance in a very large community in Naples, Florida. Morning, Doug. Good morning. Debbie, your, your sagos, you're, you're one of the few communities that ha even have any sagos alive since this pest came over in about 2000 and wiped out most of our king and queen sagos. So how'd you do that? We have over 300 sagos um, still today undergoing regular treatments. Um, six, seven years ago we had great control using a systemic safari and as you can see today um, we're quite infested. Um, so we're working on the situation to get it back under control because we do love our sagos. This Asian scale is the worst pest to control I've ever seen in over 30 years of new landscape pests. Let's take a closer look. As you can clearly see this plant is just coated like a ship with barnacles by this Asian sago scale. Now you've been making treatments so to see if it's alive or not we do the old squish test where you take your thumb and run it down the, the stem there and you can see all that orange juice. Unfortunately that means there's a lot of live scale insects there. As we look towards the crown of the sago you can see it's just coated like it was spray painted with Asian sago scale. It's feeding on green parts of the plant which is typical for scale insects but what's not too typical is finding this scale insect doing quite well hidden away under the bracts as you go lower on the trunk hidden in underneath these bracts on the trunk as well as doing well on the root system. This makes it very difficult to control. Your foliar contact sprays aren't going to reach these remnant hidden away populations. And here's another hiding place. Let's take a look at this female flower. It's got an outrageous population. And as you can see on the flowering head here, um, we noticed even some on our, of our queen sagos, we opened the flower up and noticed that it was just inundated with the scale. We're going to see where these little scale insects are hidden away. They're beneath all this covering on the trunk. So you have all this woolly stuff that's wrapped around these bracts. And it's not too bad this time. Often you'll see the scale insects underneath this woolly stuff and then you peel these bracts off and you'll see scale insects around those parts. If you're going to control this insect you need to remove these pups, these offshoots, which are scale magnets. And then you can see they just swarm on this tender growth. Alright, so this 
the scale insects also on the roots, so that makes it very, very hard to control. That's why this scale has been so successful in eradicating our sagos. Because the scale insect is feeding everywhere on the plant, a systemic insecticide is needed. How does the systemic work? It's applied as a soil drench. The roots pick up the insecticide and translocate it throughout the entire plant system. There's no place to hide. The systemic will reach every part of the plant and you get much better results than you would with a foliar. Debbie's going to show us how she applies the soil drench with her big tank truck system. So the foliage treatments aren't going to impact the populations on the roots and on hidden underneath the stuff on the trunk. So you need to go in with a systemic that's going to reach all parts of the plant. You ha have to give it a holistic approach treatment. So besides the soil treatment, we can also look at attacking the population on top on the, on the green parts of the plant, which the homeowner is going to see that first thing. And the safari or dinotephran, it's not going to be readily available to most homeowners. So you have a tactic for that. Yes, we've done foliar treatments, which are contact insecticides, such as horticultural mineral sprays, which are available to the public. An important thing about contact uh, treatment is you want to make sure you get full coverage because the inse insecticide has to contact the insect in order to get control. What we've learned and observed today is the Asian sago scale is a serious insect pest. It's killing our king and queen sagos and it's very difficult to control because it has repeating generations throughout the entire year. It feeds on every part of the plant, on the flower, on the fronds, trunk areas, as well as on the roots. Two applications of dinotefuran as a soil drench in May and late September should give satisfactory results. So thank you, Debbie. We want to save our sagos. SOS. We appreciate <laughs> you, your Doug. determinedness to have the only remnant population of sagos in Naples, Florida. Good job. <laughs> Thanks.